All right, so depending on which colleges you've applied to, you might need to audition either in person or on Zoom. This is, of course, after you've passed that initial pre-screening round of your application. So let's say you pass the pre-screening process. Yes, 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 go on. The school is gonna send you an email telling you what to expect when you go in for your audition. Now you should be expecting to meet with one, if not all the composition faculty, one by one. There may also be a component of the audition where you're required to take either a music theory or ear training exam or some combination of the two. Of course, this all depends on that post pre-screening email you get after passing that initial round. Now, in my opinion, nothing is more important than making a lasting impression on the composition faculty. After all, these are the folks that you're gonna be spending a lot of time with. And conversely, they wanna make sure that they're taking students that they actually wanna teach as well. So today, we're gonna to focus solely on my seven tips to help you with this interview process, starting with tip number one, actually doing your homework. So what I mean by this is that you've actually read their bios, that you've studied their music, studied their scores, maybe watch an interview of them, just to get to know each of these composers. So in the back of your mind, you can have a sense of, oh, which one of these composers would I like to study with and why? Now, moving on to tip number two involves your actual materials, your physical materials you're gonna bring with you to the interview. It's especially important that they are professionally bound, the paper is at a nice thickness, and that most importantly out of all of this is that you actually bring any new music that you've written between the time that you applied to the school and the time that you have the audition. Sometimes this is a two to three or even four month period that this is happening. So perhaps you've written a new piece, perhaps you've gotten a new recording, bring that new recording with you. They want to see that you've made some kind of progress in those three to four months. It's not just the pieces that you wrote for December and that's it. I remember I showed some pieces that uh, were definitely written or recorded at least between that time period between December and the actual audition. And it was really good of me to bring that piece because I think it helped me actually get into the school. Maybe for you it'd be good to bring some pieces that didn't actually make the cut for your college portfolio, but would actually help you round out your entire application. You never know what's gonna come up during these interviews. So it's best to be prepared with as many professional scores as you can have. Maybe I wouldn't go past five, six, seven scores, but at least a healthy amount of music that you can refer to anytime during the interview. The worst thing that could happen is that you're sitting there thinking, oh man, like this would have been a really good opportunity for me to bring up X, Y, Z piece, but you don't have that piece with you during that time. So be prepared, bring your scores, make sure they're professionally bound, and make sure that you have more than the actual pieces that you sent in that portfolio if it works out for you. If you feel like that, you know, you don't wanna bring more uh, pieces than what you have in the portfolio, those are the pieces that you want to show, then fine, do that. But if you have other pieces, do bring them with you to the interview. And number three is body language. You wanna make sure that what you're doing in the room when you're meeting your professor is doing what I'm doing with you right now, making eye contact. Never look down. You wanna appear confident even though you're really nervous inside. Trust me, you're going to be nervous, but make eye contact, treat this professor like a human being. Trust me, they want to be treated just as much as a human being as you do. So making eye contact will actually help diffuse that initial tension that you're going to have when you first walk into that room. Moving on to tip number four is actually what you're going to say when you're in that interview situation. So what happens when you're nervous? There's going to be two things that happen. Either you're really nervous and you just shut down. You don't want to say much or conversely, you're nervous and all you wanna do is talk and not let the other person talk. So what might happen is that you get so nervous that you just end up yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping and going and going and going on about what you like and your interests and your accomplishments. Make sure to you know, practice with a friend and think to yourself, okay, did I talk long enough or should I talk a little bit more? You know, make it a healthy amount of time not too long, not too short, and wait for the other person to answer you. This way, the professor feels like they're having a back and forth with you, almost like it's a lesson. You know, when you're in a lesson, you don't want one person to be talking the entire time. You want this mutual back and forth. So be mindful of this, practice with one of your friends when you're doing this interview prep, and see, oh, if I get nervous, am I one to talk too much, or am I one to talk too little? So this is an extremely important point. All right, so number five is be prepared to answer some no-brainer type questions. 
Like, I don't know, why do you want to be a composer? Why did you apply to this school? Who are your favorite composers and why? You want to make sure that you have not word for word answers ready to go, but you have a good sense of, okay, if someone is going to ask you this question, what am I generally going to say? All right, before we move on to the last couple of tips, I do want to share with you that I am offering one-on-one -on -one composition lessons, and you can even use this opportunity to practice your interview with me. So what you're going to do if you're interested in doing this is head over to the video description of this video. You're going to see a link that says calendly.com slash Haddad, my name. Go ahead and click that link. And then you're going to see two options, one for 30 minutes and one for one hour. Let's say you want one hour. I'm going to go ahead and click that. You can see how much it costs on the left hand side and on the right hand side, you see my full calendar. So let's say that you want to book me for uh, whatever day. I don't know when this video is coming out, but let's say uh, December 28. And uh, oh, these are the times that I'm going to be free. So let's say that you want a lesson at 10 a.m. You just click that right there and you click confirm. And then you enter your name, your email, anything that you want to share with me before the meeting. And then you would pay with this PayPal uh, you know, account right here. So the nice thing about this is that you can actually see my calendar, you can book me, and then right away you're gonna get an email with my Zoom link, and then I'm gonna get a notification that you book that time. So there is no friction at all. You book a time and I will see you at whatever time that you selected. All right, now back to the video. All right, so tip number six is prepare as many questions as you possibly can. Now, why is this important? Of course, there's the obvious part of curiosity that you actually want to know well, what's going on at this school. And the second part of this is that you are showing that you have interest in the program because otherwise, how do the professors know that you actually want to go to that particular school? It's really by the questions that you ask. And at the very end of the interview, what they're gonna do is ask you, hey, do you have any questions for me? And at that point, you need to make sure that you ask a question that you already haven't asked by that point. That way, they'll see, wow, this person actually did their homework, actually came prepared with questions, and hey, if you're on kind of the on thin ice as far as getting in, maybe that would help push you over the edge. So it's really important to have these questions in mind and even write them down before you go in for your interview. Now, tip number seven involves something that we composers never really think about at all, and that's what to wear. Now, these composers are gonna run the gamut in what they actually themselves are wearing, so I wouldn't worry too much about them. What you need to worry about is what you're gonna wear. Now, I wouldn't advise that you would show up in a tuxedo, and at the same time, I wouldn't show up with flip-flops, but I would show up maybe a little bit nicer than you would show up to a normal day of school, that's probably my rule of thumb because of course everybody has their own style, especially when you get into the music world and you want to feel comfortable, but not at the point where, you know, you are making the professor feel uncomfortable with overdressing or underdressing. So use common sense for this. And if you stuck around this long, I feel like you deserve a bonus tip, which is to actually try to set up a meeting with a current student at the school where you're interviewing. Preferably this person is at least a junior or a senior in the program, so you can get a good idea of how they felt about their time in that composition department. All right, good luck and keep on writing in the meantime, which reminds me, I gotta get going. I'll see you later.